supported both on YouTube and WebEx. There we go. So that way you have a bunch of copies of it. And the YouTube one stays like a long, a long time. So even the, the WebEx one goes up, you know, shuts down after the end of the semester, you can still access the YouTube ones. So we are going to go ahead and start out with a quick terminal review. Now this is Linux, but this pretty much applies also for Mac. And some of it does apply for Windows, and I do have a Windows machine, so I can do some Windows stuff too. So, you know, to be better, we just call this terminal review. And then we'll start out with Linux, Mac, and then move on to Windows. And I'm not gonna go too, too, too fancy here, but I just want enough that, that you can, you know, like if you're in a situation like we were earlier in, that we can work with the terminal, okay? So the terminal is historically one of the ways that you would interact with a computer, and it was usually just a big monitor, and then just black screen or like, a, yeah, pretty much black screen, and then you would have either black, either white or green text that was just blinking, and you could type things in, right? And so the terminal was the way that you would interact with a computer, and this is like before the days of, of user interface that was like really pretty, like, okay, I want to check my email, you know, let me, let me slide down this thing and all these fancy things. Like, no, that was not a thing. That, that, was, that, that took a lot of processing power, and it didn't exist back in the day. In fact, even before you had a mouse, you, you know, if you want to interact, you would interact through a terminal. And now, before that, there was other ways, such as punch cards. Now we're talking way back in the past. Uh, but let's not go that far back. Let's just stick with the terminal. So the terminal is still there today, and you can still use it. A lot of people don't use it anymore because, like, why use something so so old and, and uh, you know, kind of limiting you and what you can do, when now you have all these beautiful user interfaces that are supposed to be more intuitive for someone that has never used a computer before, but even for people that have, to just make it easier and faster to work with. And so that's kind of the reason why uh, the terminal's kind of gone away, but they're still there and they can still be useful when you're just trying to work with a simple program because to make those beautiful user interfaces requires a lot of work and time. And so sometimes when you just wanna get things done quickly, you don't care about the presentation aspect, it's easy to just work straight from the terminal. Uh, so yeah, that's why you know it's it's good to know the terminal. And when you're coding, it's a lot easier to write code to ask user input from something like a terminal versus like, you know, making an entire beautiful prompt that asks you like, please enter something and gives you like like a poll and allows you to pick up sections. That that all takes a lot of work. And if you're just prototyping something, it's unnecessary waste of time. So within the terminal. There's a couple of commands that you should know, uh, or you know, not maybe not know, but at least remember somewhere, write down somewhere, so that you can work around the terminal. So the terminal again is going to give you access to all of the files in your system and be able to interact with those files and with the system itself. And so again, we are starting out with the terminal in what is Linux and Mac, and they're both sort of Unix-based. So Linux and Mac, also known as Macintosh. Uh, I actually learned it as Macintosh, but I guess people call it Mac now, so. Yeah, uh, so the one of the ones that you saw earlier was ls. The ls command, and whenever you type a command, all you gotta do is enter the, the letters the, for the command, and then press enter, or return, whatever the key is. Uh, yeah, enter in my keyboard, but I think some of them I have return. It's the one that looks like that, right? Back in the day, it used to be, uh, I think, curved like that. You know, I'm trying to remember, like old keyboards had it like that. But uh, now it's just like a normal rectangular key. But yeah, so the ls command, I'm just gonna list out some of the commands here, allows you to see all files in a directory. This one's a little bit different in uh, Windows, by the way. It's, it's called dir, but I'll get there, okay? But it allows you to see all files in the working directory. That's one command, very useful because as you can see, we can see what's in the file in the directory. Uh, another very useful command is whenever, so, so to see where you are, like where am I in a system? So like this terminal is hooked up to some location in the system. And so that location is like a path. So like, for example, am I in, in, in the folder DA621 or am I in the folder my documents or my downloads or desktop, like where am I? So if you wanna figure out where you are, typically on the terminal, you see something like, um, you know, one, two, three, at pi or something. And, and this is your username. Or, or, and, and usually it'll show 
after that the actual directory so it might be something like uh, you know I don't know root home desktop and two colons okay and then and then it allows you to type something here so if that's the case then that tends to be what is your username and this tends to be the file path okay sometimes you'll see that other times you'll just see a dollar sign or actually you might still see a dollar sign here and then dots whether the case is on either one if you actually just want to get what the directory is you can use the command pwd okay so let me highlight the actual command here so that's ls and this is pwd pwd i think i will work in windows but we'll test that that one allows you to see the path to your current working directory okay so path to i believe actually it stands for working directory like that yeah pwd path to working directory okay let me just write that a little easier to read Okay, and working directory means where you're currently at in the computer. Again, if you're in a folder or something. So what you'll typically see when you type in PWD is going to be something with some 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 directories. Like, like I said, this could be something like desktop, desktop, forward slash, I don't know. Let's say you have a folder called DA621, and then there you have a folder called assignment one, and, and that's it. Okay, so that means you're currently in this directory here. That's where you're at. Okay? So, very useful in combination to LS to figure out where you are. Now, suppose that you're not in the directory you want to be. You want to be somewhere else. Okay, if you want to move back a directory up once, so like let's say you're in, a, in this folder, but you want to move to this folder, then you can use this command CD. Okay? CD allows you to change your working directory. Maybe that's what CD stands for, change directory. I actually don't know these, you know, I never actually questioned what they stand for, but I assume this is what they stand for because it kind of just makes sense that CD stands for change directory. And if not, then maybe that's what it should stand up to you just because it's easier to remember, right? It's not going to. Okay. So if you want to go up a directory, you put CD and then you put a space and then you put two dots together, dot, dot. What that will do is that's going to move up one directory. Okay, so again, if you're in, currently in this directory, you would go to this directory. And if you're here, go here. If you go all the way to the root, there's nothing else. Like you're just at the very, very base, like C drive or something, then they won't do anything, okay? Now, if you want to go into a directory, like let's say you're currently in this directory, in this folder here. So like if, if I was looking at the, at the user interface, which again, back in the day, they didn't, and I saw something like, I'm currently in DA621 and I see a folder called AST1 and AST2 and other stuff. Let's say I actually want to enter here. If that's what I want, then I would type in CD and then I will put the directory like that. Okay, make sure you actually match the casing. So this is uppercase, do uppercase. If it's lowercase, do lowercase. Otherwise, you run into some issues depending on the system. Some systems care, some don't. If I recall correctly, Windows doesn't care, but Linux does, and Mac does as well, I think. We'll, we'll, we'll test that in a second. But yeah, so this will take you up one directory. This will take you uh, into a directory. Now, let's say that inside of assignment one directory, they got two folders. Like you have a folder called one and a folder called two, okay? So suppose that you were currently in DA621 and you wanted to go all the way into folder one. You could first type in cdast01 and then you could type in cd1 or you could combine these two and type in cdast01 slash one. So you can go multiple directories in into one command. Okay, as many as you want actually. Okay. Uh, similarly, if you want to go all the way to the root directory from the start, instead of typing cd dot dot like 50 times, I think if you just type in the slash or two slashes, it's one of the two. Uh, you'll actually go all the way to the root, okay? But yeah, I don't really do that often, so that's why I don't remember. We'll test it in a second. Okay, so now you know how to manipulate directories and how to figure out where you are and how to uh, show the contents of a directory.
if you want to execute a Python file, of course, you just type in Python 3 and then the name of the executable. So like, a, you know, a.py or whatever it is. Okay. That's not specific to the terminal. That's specific to Python. If it was C++, then it's actually a completely different command. Uh, doesn't matter whatever you're trying to run. You What you put in is the name of the executable. And then there's some magic behind the scenes that allows that to happen because the Python 3 like executable itself is not really there. It's somewhere else. That's why the other day when I was trying to help somebody and we talked about like, well, I, I mentioned something about the environment path or path file. It's okay if you don't remember this. I just briefly mentioned it like, hey, put this command in your homebrew thing. It's, it's doing that magic linking, but you don't have to worry about any of that. It should be set up for you anyways. So, but yeah, those are very basic commands, but very useful. Uh, if you want to show hidden files, you can do ls-la, and that will show you all files in the directory, including hidden ones. Might be useful if you're like expecting to find something and it's not there. Like for example, I was gonna have uh, have him check uh, if uh, if it didn't show up at first to so use this la command. Uh, by the way, let's say that you're currently in the ast1 folder, this one here. And like the executable you're trying to run is in this folder. So in this folder, there's a file called a.py. You can run this by saying one slash a.py and that will enter the folder and then execute the file. And it's nice because, you know, you can uh, access files that are in different folders. However, this is what happened earlier. If you do this and you open a file and create a file, Python is still in the working directory of AST01, not in this working directory. So the file itself would get created here. And you might be expecting the file to get created in here, but it's not. It's being in a different spot. So that is one thing that can happen if your working directory is different. So uh, there's a command in Python that I'll show you to change your working directory at some point. Uh, it's just, it's just a, a system call which you would just type in like these. So by the way, that's not the usage of these commands. It, Python allows you to send commands to the terminal. So like you can change your, your working directory or figure out what it is via Python. So more than just knowing how to use the terminal, knowing how to use these commands can enhance your Python, Python capabilities. So, okay, that's enough of that. I think let's just show you some of the commands in practice because it's better to see than to hear, so at least in this scenario. Okay, so that's some C++ stuff. Ignore that one. Here we go. Okay, so... Hmm, let me uh, make this a little bigger. Does not like. Okay, there we go. That's that's more readable, I think. So right now I just open the terminal. In fact, in Mac, without going through all the stuff that we have to go through, you can still open the terminal. Uh, you just have to find the command. It's probably somewhere under System, and then um, it's like it's somewhere in there in the list of programs. So if you if actually if you if you go to the the uh, the doc, wherever you launch the programs and you type in terminal, you would see it. But just like here, it would just open the terminal and who knows where that terminal is. Like, we just, I have no clue. So what do I do? I type in PWD and see where I'm at. And it tells me that I am currently in this directory. This is the username for this computer, which matches what I have here. This is what I'm talking about earlier that I was saying that this is what you get in front of the terminal. It tries to tell you where you are but also uh, the domain and other details. So yeah, but yeah, that's the directory. So that's very good to know because like, if I'm working on something, that is where things would get saved. So like, for example, there's a command I haven't talked about called touch. If you say touch and then you say like, hello, what that does is actually creates an empty file in that directory. So let, how do I check what files are in the directory? Well, I can use the ls command. And as I can see, 
I got a bunch of folders, which in this case are color coded like this. This might be different in your case, but it does try to help you out by color coding things. So the white stuff is a file and the blue stuff is folder. Uh, and so here's the file that I made. So I'm actually going to remove that file because uh, I don't know, I don't want to have weird, weird things, but uh, I'll show you how to use that remove file in a minute too. Okay. So anyways, that's where I'm at. This is how I see what's currently there. I want to go to the same directory where I have the Python files that I've been working on some this semester, which I can see up here in VS Code, which is really nice because it tells me where things are at. So as you can see, it's apparently in a folder called desktop and I guess just right there on the desktop. That's kind of bad, but okay. We should probably move all these files to a nicer place. So, uh, okay. Because it's in the desktop, I will do CD and then desktop. But again, I don't want to just type in desktop like this when I can use the autocomplete by pressing tab. Now, if I have this and press tab, it autocompletes the right thing. However, if I have just a D and I press tab a few times, it doesn't autocomplete. And instead, it gives me the different options that there are. It's like, okay, there's three things that start with a D. So can you give me more? So if I type in E, then I'm good to go. Whereas if I was trying to go into like the downloads folder and tap in DO, again, it wouldn't work because there's two things that start with DO. So I have to give in one more letter to autocomplete, okay? With the autocomplete, by the way, you type in CD at first, or sorry, um, like when you type in CD here and you press tab once, nothing happens. You have to press it two times to actually see this, okay? So again, if I'm typing CD, this is one click, nothing happens. I get like a little noise that says beep. Click it again, and then it actually shows me the autocomplete for whatever that is. In this case, it was autocomplete in the actual word CD. So yeah. So autocomplete, very, very useful. Okay. So anyways, back to this. We're gonna type in CD desktop. Don't worry about the slash at the front, that's okay. Press enter. Now you can notice that this looks different too. But if I type in PWD, this looks much different because now I added to that directory. So let's see what's in desktop. Hopefully nothing bad. So um, we got some uh, some random stuff unrelated, some uh, attendance. I don't know what all these things are, but this is the stuff that is for the class, the Python's one, two, and three file, okay? So if I wanted to run those files, I can type in Python3 and then python3.py. You should not name your files like this. It's very confusing if I saw somebody do this. Um, yeah. And then that is going to be whatever this code is, I guess. Yeah, so it created a file, I think. So let's see, let's type in ls again. Uh, it, it, oh no, it opened the file. It opened file 621.tx, that's it, that's it. So it opened this file, okay? So let's say that we want to show those hidden files. We can do the dash ls dash la, uh, and this will show you details about files, but also it shows you these weird things here. That's because these are sort of like the links to be able to move around directories. That's why cd dot dot will move you back at directory like this. Okay, so let's just test that, really guys. Bam! If I do pwd, I'm there. If I do it again, I'm there. If I do it one more time, I'm basically at the very very root directory of the system. Okay, which you can see there is like the most most root. Okay, so if I want to quickly go back to where I was, well. I can use tab to see where to go. So probably I want to go to home, press tab again. There's only one end. So there's only one place to go, so it auto-completed it. Press tab a few more times to see where from there I can go. I can probably go into desktop and then press enter. And if I press PWD again, I am where I want to be. Press LS and I'm back here, okay? So that's the same commands being used. A couple of other new commands that I want to show you are going to be to remove files. So let's just listen here first. So RM allows you to delete files. It stands for remove. And the way you use it is you basically pass in the name of the file that you want. So like some file.txt or whatever you want, okay? You can also remove directories this way. It's a little bit risky to do it this way, but you can do remove dash R and then put the name of the directory. So like ASC01 or something, okay? 
What the dash R does, it's, it's called recursive. It'll delete everything in the directory and anything inside of that. So you're deleting everything. Like if the directory has a directory inside, which has a directory inside, which has files inside, which has directories and so on, it'll just blam, kill everything. You have to be a little bit careful how, when you use that. I believe there's also remove there, which is safer, but uh, I like to leave the interface. <laughs> so I use remove dash R, okay? Um, yeah, that's all really to say about remove. Let's see how we show a file. So let's say that you want to confirm that you're at the right spot and that the file that you're looking at is the file that you want to actually run. Like, oh, is this the right Python file? Okay, well, there's two commands for that. One of them is called cat and the other one is called more. And they're both meant to open a file and display it in the terminal. So for example, if my file is called file.txt, I can do cat file.txt and what this will do is it will it will uh, it will print out the file to the terminal okay and I'll show you in a second what that looks like and finally the more one is the same way in the sense that you just pass the file that you want but this one's more convenient if the file is really big so if you try to print out a massive file to the terminal it's just gonna like print everything out and you'll only really be able to see the end and you have to scroll all the way up not very convenient with more what it does is it displays the first few lines of the file and it stops and then you got to press the space key and it'll kind of shift it to the next few lines and then again and again until you get to the end it's very very convenient if you actually just want to see a piece of a file that's really big otherwise so very nice uh, and finally this is not a command but this is more of a keyboard shortcut, shortcut that you should really know and it's called control c and this is like if all the commands here like you know you're like, I'm never going to use these. The one you definitely want to at least know is this one, because this one allows, like when you run a Python program, you know, it, it, it's kind of taken over your computer or at least over the terminal. And like, if you want to stop the program halfway, right now you don't know how to, like you might try to close the window or like unplug your computer or something, but you can't really stop it easily. Well, control C as in pressing the control key and then the C key, that will terminate the Python script. Uh, and it might not work the first time, so you might have to hit it a few times, but uh, that will kill it, which is very useful when you're like, if you have like an infinite loop accidentally when we get to looping in your code or your code is just stuck, uh, it's kind of useful to know how to, how to kill the process. So yeah, very nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so first let me show you the uh, remove command, even though you kind of saw me briefly use it. So uh, what is in this D DA621 file actually? I, oh, well, there you go. Let's see what's in the DA621 file by using the cat command. <laughs> so notice I use autocomplete there. You'll see me just randomly things appear. That's because I'm pressing the tab key. That's TAA tab. So I do that and it says, hello, this is file has some text and also some numbers. I remember writing this last time, yeah. Okay, so yeah, that allows you to see the command. If I wanna see another one, let's see what is in the Python 3 file. Print file, and you'll see that that matches exactly what is here, okay, to the dot. If I use the more command with such a small file, it's not really gonna do much. It'll look the exact same because it's such a small file. But let me uh, get you a bigger file. So, Let's use the ls command and then mm, do I have a big file. I don't want to open this because they might have private information and the tenants thing will have private information. Mm, you know what? Let's just make our own big file. Okay. So let's take Oh, I have these codes in here. These are these are big too. Yeah, okay, perfect. All right, so where is that? Yeah, okay. So I have my C++ class, and some of that code has gotten kind of big, so that this actually might, could be good for that. So I'm just going to enter to the right directory. So I think it should be under here. Yeah, okay. So I believe this main file is pretty big. Well, not really big, but at least it's big enough that, main, that we'll get to see the more command. Oh, uh, sorry, cat, not main, CD. Yeah, perfect. Okay, this file is big enough that, like, as you can see, it opened the file all the way to the end, and I have to scroll up to see it. Okay? 
it's not very convenient but still it's doable here because you know i can scroll all the way up but sometimes these files might be so big that you can't even scroll up all the way to the top because like imagine you open like a book like a book is massive right so oh very useful command that i haven't mentioned that we keep using is this clear command the clear command allows you to clean your screen which is really like nice because i hate seeing a cluttered terminal so clear very nice command it will just clear your screen okay so yeah every time you see things magically disappears because i keep typing that because it bothers me that it's cluttered especially if you open this massive file like this just look and also the terminal is like even hidden like you can't even see it there but like it's all the way there so like that's not nice so I want to clear my screen. Okay, so cat not very useful for that file. Let's try more. More opens the top of the file all the way and uses the entire page, like the entire terminal, and it says more in 16%. That tells you how how much of the file you've seen so far. I'm gonna go ahead and hit space with my hand here. Bam! It it, it basically scrolls down to the next section. So as you can see, the last line here is this little curly brace and then this word. And then over here, the last line is uh, void get user input. So if I, I can still scroll up, you can see that it's right off the screen. So it's literally taking everything and just sliding it one time. So I can keep doing that, pressing space. I could hold it down and it would go really fast, but I'm pressing it one at a time. And it's very useful to look at longer files. It might not still be ideal if you have like a 100 page file, but at least bigger, bigger-ish files will be good. Okay, and when you're done, it also kind of finishes nicer. You can see there, it's that way. Okay, so that's the more, and that's the cat command. And let's go ahead and do the rm command just really fast. So let's get out of this directory for now, so we don't accidentally delete the stuff from the other classes. And so let us. One more command before we delete that might be useful to show you delete is how to copy files because I don't want to delete something permanently here. So the copy command is called cp. And this one, I guess, if you want to remember it, you know, copy has the word c and p in it. So, yeah. And this one's a little bit trickier to use. The way you use it is you have to give it two commands, after, or two two uh, two things after it, one and two at least. This is going to be what you're copying, so some file, and this is what you want to name the copy. Okay, so again, this is what you're copying. And this one is the name of the copied file, of the new copied file. Okay, so like file one is the, 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 what I'm actually wanting to copy, and new file is the name of the copy. Okay, uh, this by the way doesn't have to actually be a uh, a directory or sorry it doesn't have to be an actual file it can be a directory and a file if you want to copy like inside another directory okay so i'll show you that too in a second but yeah let's let's do copying first before we delete something so that i can delete the copies and not delete something important so let's say that we want to copy the python 3 file okay so i type in cp and then i type in python 3.py which is the name of the file and then i want to make the i want to put in the name of what i want the copy to be called so let's say i want my copy to be called uh copy a file or something okay dot pi press enter and nothing happens but if you type in ls again you will see that now we have copy of file amongst the things listed there okay and if i go ahead and use cat command i can see that it contains the same stuff as the other one let me show you by saying cat python 3 you will see that they look identical okay uh, let us say that I wanted to copy into this folder, the CS202 folder, uh, the Python 3 file. So, or maybe the copy of a copy. How about that? So, copy a file, and so, and then I want to put in the directory name, and then I'm going to say uh, another copy. Dot pi. Or I could change the, the the format, by the way. Well, not the format, but the extension. It's still the same document with the same information. 
So if I do that, price in that less, nothing is here. But if I go into the directory, type in ls, I can see there that I have another copy. And if I print that out, you can see that I still have that. So very useful to copy things. Let's go ahead and remove that file though, because I don't want that copy to be there. So I can just remove another copy. Oops, let me do that slash. And now it's gone. Back out to the other one. And let's remove this other copy. Actually, let's not remove that one yet, okay? But as you can see, they remove the first one. And the reason I don't want to remove that yet is because I want to show you how to rename files. Renaming files is something other that, that can be coming useful. It's called the move command. The move command sort of has two uses. One of them, as the name implies, is to move files, like move them around the system. And the other one is to rename. Okay? That one is just easier if I show you. So, if I want to rename the file, I type in MV, and again, I start by putting, it's kind of like the copy command. You start with the file that you want to work with, and then you, what you want to rename it to. So, uh, I'm going to rename it to uh, hello.py. Press enter. If I press ls again, you will see that it's no longer here because it's alphabetical, so I moved it over here. Okay? But it's still the same context, as you can see. Okay, so that's basically how move works. Uh, however, it's also useful for for moving files, as the name implies. So suppose that I wanted to move the hello file into the directory, the 202 directory. Well, I can just put in the directory name, put in what I wanted to be moved as. So let's just say I want to pick the same name, but I don't have to, by the way. I could change the name at this point. Press enter. You'll see that the file is gone from here, but if I go into the CS202 directory, you would see it. However, I don't want to go into the directory because guess what? The ls command is not just useful for showing what's in the current directory. You can actually uh, put the directory, if you don't put anything next to the ls command, it'll show you the current directory. But you can also go in there and put in a directory that you want to check what is in there by doing something like this. Press enter, and now the ls is giving me the contents of this folder here. So that's convenient. Uh, again, this is kind of like enhancing your abilities now to do more fancy things. Uh, and similarly, if I want to, to uh, display something, I can also go ahead and do that and that and still see the file while still remaining in this directory. So my working directory is actually this desktop, but I, I can still use the commands at other places. So let's remove now the file. So remove and then it's in the 202 directory and then if I press tab a few times, it tells me what's there. So it's called hello.py. Do that, and I'll do ls on that directory, and you can see that it's gone. And not, nowhere in this point, in this point, did I leave the desktop directory. Okay. So again, we're getting a little fancier, but you know, it's good to know these things. Okay, I think that's that's enough commands. There's going to be more commands that will come up. We'll talk about them when the time comes. But uh, I think this is kind of a good starting point. Maybe one last command that I'll show you. This one's a little fancy, but could be useful, I guess, is if you ever need to edit something directly in the terminal. So suppose you have a file that you want to edit, okay? So let's actually make another copy of the uh, Python 3. And let's call this uh, temp.py, okay? So now, suppose that I needed to modify. And by the way, a lot of the times, even though today, modern day and age and everything, uh, user interface is like obviously the big deal for, for everything computer related. Uh, you're, you're literally right now in a user interface where you can, you can see me and you can click things and whatnot. However, even in today's day and age, when it comes to high computing machines, so like supercomputers and whatnot, they are typically handled and connected to using a terminal. So it's still popular today to use when you're talking with a server somewhere else, to use a terminal. There's things like remote desktop and whatnot. For example, I have a, I have a Raspberry Pi that's a tiny little server, and I have a, a thing called a program called Real VNC that connects to that to that server, and I still see a desktop. And there's other things like that, like TeamViewer and whatnot, to allow you to remotely connect to something. But like for example, let me just connect to that really fast. Here we go. 
Oh, it looks like uh, someone left something on. I shared this with some of my students, but like they're working on a project and they just kind of left some things open. But this is this is literally a Raspberry Pi that is. It just happens to be behind me, but it's actually connected via the internet. And this is like this because I guess a student was working on some stuff and they, uh, you know, they left everything running. But which is fine because why turn it off? I mean, it, it should be on anyways. Uh, let me make sure there was no personal information in there. Uh, nope, no personal information. Perfect. Okay. So if I want to close this, I can just close it. But yeah, so sometimes there's still, there's, there is some user interface, but a lot of the times it's going to be just a terminal. Okay. So because of that, knowing how to use a terminal when you're trying to do something. And, and that's the thing. With data analytics, again, you're dealing with a lot of data. So you don't want to, I mean... You do run some things at home, but when you're doing with serious stuff, like lots of data, you don't want to run that in your home computer. You want to run that in a special computer in the server somewhere, cooled, with a lot of power, et cetera, et cetera. Most of likely, those terminal, those computers will be, you will be able to interact with them through a terminal. So most of the time, again, you run a prototype at home, you get the Python script running, and then all you got to do is like literally go into terminal and just type in Python 3, uh, you know, myfile.py, hit enter, and, and you're good to go. You go home and sleep, and or you're already home because you're connected remotely, but, you know, you wake up tomorrow and check the terminal and see if it's done, right? So most of the time you'll do that, but there comes a time where you might need to manipulate something in the file. You might need to move the file to the right spot in the server, or what I'm about to show you, suppose that you have to do a quick modification to your file. Like, you got to do a little tweak or something, okay? You're like, oh, snap, I forgot to, uh, I screwed up, like, like, you know, I, you know, I screwed up a quote, you know, I put two quotes instead of one quote, something like that. So there's a lot of different ways. There's Vim and there's Gedit and uh, sort of like Emacs and other things. But the one that I personally like is Nano, just because it's the simplest one. You don't have to learn a lot of keyboard shortcuts. So if you type in Nano and then name of a file, you get a little text editor. You, you can't use your mouse. You have to use the keys, like arrow keys to move around. But you can quickly edit something. So like, okay, suppose that, uh, you know, I wanted to change here this file IO to say like file IO2. I don't know, it's just something that like some policy of the server is like you have to do this some, some whatnot, okay? The point is that you can do quick edits like this. And then you do have to remember some shortcuts, uh, although they're written right here, but you have to remember how this works is you, if you wanna use any of these commands, you have to press the control key and then whatever letter is listed here. So for example, to exit is control X because there's an X here. So I'm gonna press control X and it's gonna ask you save modify buffers. That's, that's the uh, fancy way of saying, would you like to save the file? So you gotta put in yes by pressing a Y and it automatically asks me what the name of the file to save as is, which it auto fills it with the current name. So I just press enter and I'm good to go. Now, if I cap that file, I will see that it has been indeed modified. Okay? so. Again, let me do that one more time. So nano with the file name, it opens it. I can use my arrow keys to edit things. You know, again, this isn't really convenient for like modifying a lot of code. It's convenient for doing those quick fixes that you gotta do like right now. You know, like, oh snap, I messed up the name of the file. It should have been da621a.txt or something. So you do that. Again, control X, hit Y to save, hit enter to overwrite, and you're good to go. Okay, final time. This time, um, I don't know. Let's just say it doesn't matter because I'm, I'm probably not going to run this file, but let's say we do that. Control X, Y, and if you, let's say this time I want to save with a different name, I call it temp2.py. So I modify that with the arrow keys, press enter. This is going to say save on the different name, hit Y for yes, you're good to go. You see, I have temp and temp2. Okay, so let's remove those files. But yeah, nano, very convenient for those quick fixes, okay? Trust me, you have at some point, if you ever do things with the server, with the terminal, you'll have to do that. So now we did have a question earlier. Uh, oh, we, uh, can we do this from an IDE or just from Python? So at, in your local computer, you should definitely do these things from, from an IDE. Uh, or Jupyter Notebook or whatever it is. But I'm talking more about like if you're ever forced to use a terminal, such as like in a server, the server might not 
let you use an IDE. You might be stuck using a terminal. There are ways to hook up IDEs with servers, by the way, but you know, that's a little fancy. You're gonna have to watch like an hour long YouTube video and you know, it might work, it might not work. It depends on the security of the server, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm kind of telling you like the worst case scenario, you'll be stuck with a terminal. So you might as well know that, at least some basic sense. So yeah. Yep, terminal is indeed the same as command prompt. So that's a good segue because now let us try to do some of these things in the in Windows, okay? Now I don't usually use the command prompt in Windows, so I might screw some things up here, but I'll do my best. So to open the command prompt in Windows, you can just type in I mean I just type C in it all like set command prompt, but you might have to type actually command prompt. Okay, so we move that over here. So welcome to Windows. Uh, oh yeah, let me close this and see if it's still really big font. I hope not. Okay, it's fixed on that. I don't want to have massive font in my terminal. Um, so the Windows one, let's see how we can make it big. Control plus, that doesn't work. Mm. Properties, cursor size, font. Okay, it's a 16. I'm going to write that down because I don't want to change that permanently. But I'm going to make it for now 28. Is that big enough or should I make it bigger? Is that good? Is that readable? I don't know if because of the streaming quality. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. So I'm right clicking, by the way, to see this in case you want to do that at home. Okay, this is a little better. You know, it, it's a compromise, right? If I make it too big, then uh, then you can't see anything. Okay, and then let me just shorten that so it's not off screen. Okay, so as you can see, this is probably my working path, but let's just try this. I so I wrote all the commands down earlier because now I'm gonna go from the top. So let's start with the ls. Let's see if that one works. ls is not recognized, so it doesn't work. Because in Windows, some of the commands from Linux do not translate. So in this case, instead of ls, it's dir. Okay? So dir is going to do the same thing, which is show you the contents of the current directory, which is a lot of things. So here, let's probably start out by going into a different directory. So let me open up my uh, like some Windows thing here and make a folder in there so we can play. Uh, where is this at? So we're at this directory. So let me just go there. Actually, you know what? Why don't we make the folder ourselves? I didn't show you how to do that in uh, in Linux, technically. So yeah, I said that's actually a good one that I should have shown you. Let me show you that one really fast. It's the same one in Windows as it is in Linux. So it's really small, but if you just type in make there, and then you do the folder like that, that will make a directory, okay? So mkdir. And it's complaining that I can't delete a folder, so I do the dash r part, okay? But yeah, make there will work in Linux. But here, I'll show you in big fonts here for, uh, oops, hold on. There we go, okay. So, make directory da621, okay? So if I type in dra again, and I scroll around, I can see it right here. So I have created this folder 621. Okay, perfect. So that's how I make a directory. So let me actually add that to the list of things in here. Don't worry, I'm just writing down the words that I'll make there. Just to remember that's a command that we went over. Okay, so let us go ahead and try to enter that folder. So we're gonna do the CD and then DA621, press enter. So CD works in Windows as well, pretty cool. But LS does not, so we type in DIR, which is not empty because there's nothing in the file, or sorry, nothing in the, in the folder, okay? Cool, so let us go ahead and, hmm, how do we add something to a folder? Um, well, nano is not gonna work, that's for sure. What would be a good text editor in, in Windows that's in the terminal? Uh, command prompt text editor. 
edit. That's right. So edit should work like nano. So I'm going to say edit and I'm going to make a file. I'm going to call it uh, da.py. Ah, it doesn't work. We don't have that. That must be on PowerShell. Okay, apparently I can use Notepad. Let's try that. Let's see if that actually works. Yeah, it did. Okay, so it, it, it created, you can't see it and I can't move it, but it, it gave me a message saying, cannot find the da.py file. Do you want to create a new file? So I'm gonna hit yes on that. And it opened up a, a, like, a, like a notepad. So I know this is really tiny, so I'm just gonna write a bunch of garbage in here, just so that we can see things happen. Okay, there's a lot of text now in there. Okay, so I'm gonna close that. And now if I type in dir, I see da.py, okay? So, cool, notepad. Is, <laughs> I guess that works, that's one way of editing things. So, um, I'm gonna write it here on the red. So, ls is dir, which OBS, the last OBS, there we go. There we go. Okay, so dir instead of ls, pwd works the same. Actually, we haven't tested that. I don't think did we test that one? I don't know if we did, but it should. Huh? Does not work. Um, how do I get the directory in Windows? Mm. Path maybe? No. Well, when in that Google, so let me just Google. PWD and Windows. Well, I guess I can do echo. Okay. So echo in both Windows and Linux allow you to just echo whatever you write. So if I write echo hello then the terminal just says hello. And this works the same way in Linux. So echo is good if like you're writing a bash script, which is a totally different language, and you just wanted to print something out to the screen. But it's saying that one way of mimicking the, the, echo, the PWD from Linux is to type in echo and then type in CD. So yeah, that actually worked out. So let us write that one down too. So we got echo. CD, okay? So that one's how you basically print out your path, which is this, okay? Moving on, how to actually use, uh, how to enter and exit directories, okay? That one I do remember that CD should work. So if I type in CD and then dot dot, it gets me back a directory, or I can type in cd da621 to get back into the directory. So that one works the same way in Windows. So I'm going to check those off. Uh, I don't remember if I have Python installed. So if I type in Python here, I don't think it'll. I don't know. Oh, it, just, it opened the Microsoft Store. Yeah, so I don't have Python installed on this Windows machine, so you know it won't do anything. But if you have it installed, then you you would open up the interface. Okay, uh, I keep typing LS, giving it Linux. Okay, let's try to see if the copy command will work. This is that one. So, does that work? CP is not recognizable. Okay, I think it's copy in Windows. So, if I say copy da.py and then I say like copy of da, one file copied, and then I type in there. Yeah, okay. So, in Windows, instead of saying CP, it's copy. It's literally copy, like the word copy, okay? I think for move, it might be the same pattern. So if I type in ME, it says not recognizable. If I say move, it works. Okay, yeah. So for moving stuff, so again, renaming or, or, or moving something, I can say move copy of the A and call it a uh, hello. And if I do that, you can see that from copy of the A, it became hello, okay? So the move command is going to just be the word move. So I guess more typing. Okay, so 
Nano, we saw is notepad essentially. Make it there. Clear. Oh yeah, clear. So clear doesn't work. That one I remember. For that one, I think it's CLS. Yeah, CLS. So clear for clearing the screen, uh, instead of using the word clear, this one's nicer because there's less writing. It's just CLS, which I guess means clear screen. Okay. Uh, cat and more. Does cat work? Nope, cat does not work. So that one, uh, what about more? More might work actually, more. Yeah, more does work the same way. That's very nice. You see the space thing works and everything. So very cool. Uh, cat though, let's see what cat equivalent would be. Cat command in Windows. What is the equivalent stack overflow? Type, okay, that one I, I, I don't remember at all. So if I type in type and then I say d.py, yeah. Okay, so like I said, I'm, I'm mostly a Linux user for like work stuff. I have a Windows machine at home and like that's my main computer, but I don't typically do things on the terminal or work related on uh, Windows. I usually have VMs, but you know, it, it's all, it all translates. You just have to figure out what it translates to. Okay, I think that's all the commands. Uh, I guess we haven't tried to remove yet, yeah, so. Okay, so let's start removing these files. So let's see if remove will work. Remove does not work. I think it might be delete. Yep, it's delete. Okay. I don't know if that's just I mean remembering or guessing, frankly. It's like I kind of want to say that I knew that, but it just seemed intuitive. So I don't know. Let's try deleting the other one as well. Okay. Let's try to remove the entire directory that we made. So that's delete the A621. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Oh, that's kind of nice it asked me if I'm sure. Okay, under understandable. And it is not gone. That's scary. So what did I delete then? Ah, I see so I've deleted everything from the directory, but not the directory itself. Mm, okay. How do we remove the directory? Let's see. Windows. I think it's RD. Or remove there, apparently. Let's try remove there first. Remove their da621. Okay, that worked. So it's removed there. So rmdir621. So rm. By the way, that actually, uh, I believe, remove there does work also in Linux. That's what I was saying earlier, but I don't permit. I don't personally use it. So let's just test it really fast. Make directory test one. Remove there, test one. Yep, it works in, in Linux too. I, I know you couldn't see that, but I just tested it. So remove there will work in both in both systems. So I guess that's a good one for you guys to remember. For me, I'm just so used to using remove R, like dash R. But yeah, use that, okay? So that's it. Again, to go over them really fast, LS, DIR for, for Windows. PWD is echo with that percent cd cd works the same cd dot dot works the same all cd works the same instead of rm it's del for for delete for moving for directories it's rm dir and then the directory name instead of cat it's type more works the same in both systems cl uh, control c i believe works the same in both systems as well uh, instead of clear it's cls copy is just literally the word copy move it's just the word move Instead of nano, you can use notepad or some other text editor, I suppose. Um, you'll have to see. I don't know what the popular ter terminal based ones are in Windows. And then uh, make their works the same. Okay? So that is Windows. And like I said, Linux will be the same thing as, uh, uh, sorry, Mac will be the same thing as the Linux ones. Okay?
I believe they all literally work the same. One last thing that I'll show you, uh, and then I guess we're out of time, is that um, the, in Windows, like the few times that I have had to use like a Windows command prompt is I use actually it's known as PowerShell because PowerShell has all of the uh, features that that Linux has. That's a lot of those commands in there and it's on Windows already. And it's just so much more convenient to use. So let me just open up a PowerShell. So, you know, you go to Windows Start and just type in PowerShell and then you get something blue like, hold on, like this. And then here, if I type in like PWD, it works. Like most of the Linux commands, does LS work? Yeah, LS works. So all the Linux commands, like, well, I don't want to say all, all because there's probably some obscure command that might not work, but all the, the ones that we talked about pretty much today do work on Windows if you're using a PowerShell, okay? So don't use the command prompt at this point. Use PowerShell. It's like the command prompt plus more. So there's really no reason to, but I, I still wanted to show it to you because you never know what you might run into. But PowerShell is great. Uh, it makes me not have to remember the Windows commands. So for me, that's great. Okay, so that's PowerShell. And uh, that's it. I can't think of any other command, but we will run into them as time goes on. I'm sure we'll hit a command and be like, oh, by the way, there's this command or there's that command. But, uh, you know, like at some point I'll show you maybe uh, in a couple of weeks, I'll show you how you can call the commands from within the Python script, which can be useful because your Python script might want to like create files and directories to write data to instead of just like writing to like the same directory. And so it's good to be able to send terminal commands through Python uh, to, to, to the uh, machine to be able to do that organization. So, yeah. So the video that I'm recording and posting later today for you guys to watch on Thursday, we'll talk more about, we'll keep going with Python. So I'll do the if statement and I'll see how far I get with that. Okay. Any questions or anything? Let me stop the recording for the YouTube. Give me one second.